everybody. Thanks for coming. Come on and uh, come on and sit down if you're still over there. I'm uh, I'm Joe Robinson. I'm the organizer of Designers and Geeks. Thanks all very much for coming. Uh, who's here for the first time tonight? Nice. Well, welcome. Um, we have a lot of fun, and uh, I hope that you will enjoy it as much as we do. So, um, so very excited about tonight. Before we get started, though, I just want to say uh, a quick thank you to Yelp. Uh, they provide the space, uh, this awesome place that we're all sitting in, uh, as well as the pizza and stuff. So, thank you to Yelp. A round of applause. This is uh, this is Eric from Yelp. Hey everybody! Thanks for coming out tonight. I'll be be really quick. It's it's uh it's not a scam that we have someone from Yelp speaking here tonight. He's actually legitimately awesome. So I don't want you to think. Yeah, thank you for the <laughs> applause for the awesome guy. Um, so I, my name is Eric. I head up the product team here at Yelp. Um, we are hiring product managers and designers. So if you're interested in either one of those things, you can come talk to me or anyone else in one of these fancy red jackets after the show. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks again to Yelp. Um. How many folks saw the uh, General Assembly Scholarship? I'm just curious, uh, was that people excited about that or, or cool? Um, is Eric here tonight, Eric Pan, who won it? Not yet, I'm also. Not yet. Oh, he's coming, okay, great. So um, we did uh, get a ton of applications for that, so thank you to everybody that put one in. Um, and, and sorry if you're not Eric. Uh, uh, the selected winner by General Assembly was a guy named Eric Pan, um, but basically uh, General Assembly's out here doing events uh, they do a lot of cool stuff for designers and developers, so um, check it out. Um, it was very cool that they, they gave something away to the designers and geeks community, so I was happy to do that. Um, so cool. Uh, so we'll dive right in. Um, for those of you that haven't been here before, uh, it basically consists of about a half-hour talk. Um, Michael will take some Q&A after, uh, and then we have a segment called Shout Outs, where you can come up uh, right over here, line up, and I'll give you a microphone, and you can say something that you'd like to network about or people you'd like to meet, things like that. Um, after that, uh, there's more networking, and, and sometimes there's uh, an after party at Local Edition around the corner. So um, that is in the uh, mobile web app that uh, you may have scanned in the elevator ride. So cool. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce Michael Ernst. Um, Michael's a really good friend of mine. Um, I've actually known him much longer than his career at Yelp uh, and have been trying to get him to speak at Designers and Geeks basically since I started organizing the event. Um, so super excited to uh, have him talk a little bit about his experience as a graphic designer as an, and as an illustrator. So um, let's give him a, a warm welcome. Cool. Uh, I'm just glad all my coworkers aren't sitting up front. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I'm a little new to the uh, speaker circuit, so I have some cheating notes, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> but this is how I learned to stop worrying and love visual design. So I was the original designer at Yelp, um, and for the first Four and a half years, I was uh, responsible for creating the brand, the look and feel of the site. Um, and then in 2009, I took some time off, um, freelanced, worked for a couple startups, and then Yelp graciously brought me back <laughs> uh, into the fold as a visual designer. And uh, I've been working on the product team. And I've always stood by my strengths. and never tried to be the long sought after unicorn that's so prevalent in the valley or that people are trying to, to get in the valley. And I really think you should focus on what you're good at. And so here's a bit of my history. If you come out of left field, you're sort of subject to subjectivity. But this is OK, because you'll get noticed. So first, embrace your style. So in 1999, there was a fine artist named Chris Ophelia, and he created this piece of art uh, called the Virgin Mary, and uh, he had adorned it with elephant dung. Um, and so people really believed that it was like this sacrilegious thing, and, and it's really a sign of life and biology of a powerful elephant, and not desecration. But it was memorable. 
uh, even Rudy Giuliani uh, brought a lawsuit against it as sick and disgusting. Um, but it was his style, and it was part of his heritage. So this is Yelp. <laughs> um, some people might not like the visual style, but it's unique. And not to compare it to a you know, work of fine art, but that sort of thinking serves as inspiration for me um, to like build the Yelp brand. And I want to shake things up in a similar way on the startup front, um, especially you know, back when we were creating it. Um, we were bucking the trends of blue websites out there, City Search, Judy's Book, Insider Pages, you know, and we used red to elicit passion, appetite, um, as well as just a general bold color scheme. So we fully embraced red as our own. Uh, and then there's this. <laughs> Rich kid, cool. Uh, ostentatious is probably the best way to describe this. Uh, it's a vanity side project of mine. Um, it's nothing but a hype brand and uh, a way to embrace my style to the fullest without any boundaries. Um, we created this unknown brand memorable just by being over the top. So that brings me to this point. Create something memorable. The Lady Gaga meat suit. You don't really forget this. Um, Lady Gaga is the queen of memorable imagery these days. She creates these outrageous outfits like meat suits and Muppet dresses. Uh, and they sort of stick with you. Um, I try and do the same thing in my work, maybe not to such an extreme as this, but to make my design memorable, or at least try and make my design memorable. So then, the Yelp logo. What is it? Pizza slices, a flower, what? What do you see in it? The fact that it wasn't just an exclamation mark makes it more interesting. It's you know not normal or standard, and people see different things in it, but it you know, has, has stuck out in people's minds, which is nice. Um, so these were the original sketches that I did in 2005. Um, some of you may have seen this on our blog or uh, in the Quora post. Um, so just to give you a quick background, I uh, tried to expand on speech balloons, which Jeremy Stoppelman, our CEO, didn't really care for. Um, and then abstract shapes, and then using a dog to attempt the, to own the Yelp noise that, <laughs> that a dog makes when you kick it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but what we ended up with uh, was this asterisk, because uh, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of um, comics. And there was always this little burst of expression that would come over uh, characters' heads. It was almost like the onomatopoeia of uh, a pop or, uh, you know, self-expression. Um, so I just expanded on this this asterisk idea, and that's where the Yelp logo came in. Uh, Carrie rocks. So these were T-shirts that I made in 2004. Um, I had this desire to make t-shirts for the John Kerry campaign uh, because at the time everybody was making these anybody but Bush t-shirts. And so I tried to attempt to accentuate um, the positive side of John Kerry. And I think I was the only person who tried to make John Kerry cool. <laughs> so, uh, but the design was successful in so much as um, people remembered it because it was different. And you know that's, again, sort of what I've, I've been trying to do throughout my work. So 
I think you really should choose a career and run with it. Uh, have a key talent and make it your focus. Be willing to attempt the other stuff. Just don't try to be everything to everyone. Um, I'm a visual designer, uh, but I still know enough about CS, uh, CSS and UI to properly design for it. I just don't claim that I can do front end or that I'm good at UX or UI design. Uh, have your own style. Uh, this design sort of looks like me. <laughs> Everything I design is to appease myself and my own aesthetic. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know, I move on and try a project more suited for me. Um, really, the more you try, the better you get at it. Colors and fonts are all up to subjectivity. We are all subject to subjectivity. What's your favorite color? Uh, I picked a specific direction for Yelp and I ran with it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be everybody's favorite. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we picked red and we ran with it. Another good thing is work with complementary partners. So these guys, uh, it's Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Bernie Taupin writes all of Elton John's music, and Elton John performs it. Um, so neither one of them would be successful without the other. And my Bernie Taupins are my front-end developers, uh, you know, UI designers, everything that makes what I do function. Next, work with your users. Your users are also complementary partners. Um, let them tell you what they want. Uh, originally, Yelp was an email-based recommendation service where you sent a Yelp uh, to your friends to get suggested businesses. Users guided us to move to more of a review style site. You know, they, they showed us that they wanted to write reviews and showcase their talents and, you know, as opposed to just giving friend recommendations. So, and please ignore the ugly 2005 Yelp design. <laughs> it's evolved since then. And just be open to opinions. Uh, everyone has a unique experience that can inform your design. Uh, everybody from engineers, product managers, executives, other designers, PR, users, girlfriends, mothers, friends, lawyers, accountants, doctors, whoever. Just know that everybody's perspective is important. And remember who you're designing for. Women's magazines. <laughs> so we gathered a bunch of these women's magazines uh, for Yelp back in the early days to try and get in the mindset of women. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there were seven dudes sitting around <laughs> trying to figure out how to make a site, you know, aesthetically pleasing to women. And so we all scoured our girlfriend's uh, stashes of magazines and just looked through it because we wanted to figure out a way to get past uh, our site, which was blue and yellow and very male-focused. And so this was one of the best ways that we knew how. Um, and we needed these magazines to inform us. And design for the audience. Always focus on who will be using the product, uh, not just your own personal bias. Like, I don't design things necessarily for me. Um, I try and figure out, uh, you know, who is using it and what best suits them. Like, 
compliments for people who are fairly social. Uh, and that reads women. <laughs> um, or illustrations that uh, you know I did for Giftly that sort of have a DIY feel that can sort of reach a relatively broad audience. Uh, or you know the savvy shopper. Most importantly though, design for yourself. Design that entertains you will entertain others. Um, I created this uh, hamster as our power source uh, Easter egg in, in the iPhone app uh, for Yelp. And it, it was just entertaining to me. Um, I created a stinky fish for you know, potentially fishy reviews. And you know, one of the icons that everybody kept walking by my desk <laughs> laughing at was, don't be that guy. And you know, the fact that I enjoyed creating all of these things resonated with everybody else. So, and I just think people need to stop trying to be the unicorn. Um, you have a specific set of talents, whether it's UI or visual or front end, you know, et cetera. Um, I have a certain penchant for illustration and branding, so that's my strength. That's what I lean on. Um, and it's served me well to, to do that. Um, and I think, too, most importantly, be sure to align yourself with a company that wants you for you. Um, you know, your talents will be able to shine much greater if the company, you know, wants you for very specific reasons. Um, so I stuck by my guns on what I was good at. Um, you know, I seem to, I took the plunge and I seem to do okay. So, yeah, oops, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I deleted. So, questions? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, when it comes to social media, um, if you have a lot of men on the site, it can, you know, tend to get creepy. <laughs> and so our sort of core philosophy in the beginning was if you have women on the site who are active users, the men will follow, naturally. <laughs> And it becomes, I, 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 it is funny, but it's, it is a less creepy sort of way to build a quality social network. Yeah? How long did it take to go from the design process to developing the logo? Um, each logo is different. Um, I mean, I've... I've had, uh, well, the Yelp logo, for instance, took four weeks because I was dropped into the company and like, you know, it was like shotgun approach, like we're in a startup, let's, let's get this thing moving. Um, but I've had other logos take, you know, two months, three months. It, it really just depends. It depends on um, uh, how receptive the client is and, and how, uh, you know, just how involved they want to be and, and how many iterations they want to see. And so it, it definitely varies. Yeah. When you, um, when you focus as kind of a specialist, as, as focusing on what you're good at, like that's kind of making you a specialist, right? Um, and, and it forces you to depend on um, other people with other specialties. Mm -hmm. Um, with those other people. Um, what, 
do you think are some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered by focusing and becoming a specialist for each one? What are some of the biggest challenge, challenges with that collaboration or that memo, and how do you overcome it? Um, well, I think the biggest challenge is, is, as a designer, you have to be open to you know, handing it off. Uh, if you're, you know, going to micromanage the entire process, it's just going to go poorly because, you know, you're you're just going to get mired in in all of, uh, you know, your own garbage <laughs> with trying to manage design. Um, and so I think I think letting go is the biggest thing. Is you know we we let go when. Uh, you know, we hire a lawyer or, you know, uh, an accountant. Like, you know, you, you, you let them do their job. And so the biggest thing as a designer is you have to not let it be personal. You know, don't, don't let any of the design, you know, be super personal where you just squirrel it away and you just, you know, just hand it off and trust that, you know, the other people are going to do what they need to do. Just as like a. Um, I mean, the tools are always improving, and it's you know like, it's it's always great to get like, faster as a designer, you know, using the new updated tools, um, but, I mean, yeah, it. It's hard. It, it, I think it's increasingly harder to become a specialist because people do expect you to design for mobile, and they expect you to understand, you know, UI if you're a visual designer. And so they they want you to learn. And I mean, I, I it's I'm trying. Like I'm trying to learn, but at the same time, it's you know, it, it's this weird. Dichotomy, because I, I, I want to be a specialist, but yet I want to learn so that I'm more uh, valuable as an employee. Yeah, there were only seven of us, so I had to. Um, I, I had no choice. And um, I, it was a good learning experience for me. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've always sort of removed myself. I, I, I sort of joke around that, you know, even though I, I did the UI for Yelp, that I'm not, I'm not good at it. Like, I, I always make the comparison to, um, to Jaws, uh, where Spielberg knew well enough not to show the shark because it was, you know, it was uh, just this like really bad visual effect, and so he knew his limits as far as that was concerned, and so I felt like I knew my limits of UI design uh, when I was early on at Yelp, and so I tried to just keep it as simple as possible and not screw it up. Yeah. So if you're heading visual design, how would you use something uh, like site design or makeup or film or graphic design in your company to Man, that's, kind of that's such a loaded question. I do not like 99 designs. Um, it's uh, you're basically you're you're getting spec work on the cheap with 99 designs, and so I just I I, I feel like as a designer you're you are hired to do a very specific job, and you should be good at it. And like if if you can't do it, then you know you, you should be let go. <laughs> 
<laughs> and outsourcing all of that design just really makes you know the process so much more complicated and so much just I don't know there's uh, I, I the spec work is what bothers me. <laughs> Um, no, I do. I, I, I think our brand is reflective of um, people writing reviews. Um, and it's, you know, reflective of the user. It's, it's um, I mean, I guess, you know, Yelp has gotten a, a little bit of a bad rap with uh, local businesses from time to time, but it's, you know, it's, it, it's a fun, engaging brand. And so it, that's for the users. That's to help users like write reviews. And, and I think that's what it's meant for. Yeah. Um, oh. D d d go. <laughs> so, um, what's the difference you feel um, is for um, design for a company and design for yourself without any boundaries? Design for a company and design for yourself? Uh, like, what type of design for yourself? Yeah, like, uh, you know, you show that it's uh, the style you design for fun. Oh, um, like, how is, how is that different? Right. How are the two how different? Do you, you know, do you make, do you any, um, you know, compromise or, you know, design for a company like the logo, people may not, you, you yourself may not like it, but people like it. Right. Um, well, design for a company is, you know, you're, you're doing work for a paid client, you know, and for a very specific audience. When you do work that uh, is for yourself, it's, I would say, more akin to fine art. I mean, it's not quite the same, but it's, it's similar because you have, you know, freedom of expression and you're pulling in all of your, you know, sort of own... Uh, experiences into the the design or art or you know whatever you want to call it and so there's there's just so much more freedom with doing something for for yourself um, but the nice thing about doing design for a company is the constraints allow you to really focus on what you're doing you know design for yourself you're just you have no, you, there's no constraints, so you just, you, you're like, I don't, maybe I'll, you know, make an umbrella hat. And, you know, with, with corporate design, it's, it's, it's very, it's very streamlined and very focused. Uh, there's there's probably some people in this room that are like gonna criticize, you know, uh, <laughs> my designs where they're like, this isn't pixel perfect. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> They've seen some of the stuff that I've done. Um, for me, it's it's just getting it out there. Like, I just I, I feel like you just you have to create and you just have to throw it out there. And if if you get really hung up on the details. You have to pick which details you get hung up on, um, and you just sort of, you, I, you just sort of go. Like I think back to when I made the Yelp logo, and, and I was just like, you know, looking back in retrospect, I probably would have done some things differently, you know, fine tune more things, but it was just a matter of, at the time, I just I had to get it out and. You know, now it, it is what it is, and so with anything you create, you just sort of have to just, you know, be okay with it. Uh, 
I mean, like, like they say, you know, your first instinct is usually the right one, right? So, I, I mean, it's a judgment call. <laughs> yeah? So, um, you mentioned about the subjectivity in design. Mm -hmm. I'm not a visual designer, so I can visualize it on UX, but then I also, like, when it comes to design UX, you still have the users coming in and out now. Like, when you don't know what op design options to choose, you can still ask for different user feedback. But visual design is way more sub subjective in mm -hmm. terms of visualizing. So, who's taking I mean, it, it definitely depends. It, it depends on how the structure of the company is set up. Um, it depends on, you know, how, I guess, diplomatic I want to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, if I feel very strongly that Yelp needs to be read, then I need to step up and, and say, okay, yes, this, this has to be this way because it's my intuition. And really that's, that's what it comes down to. It, you, you're just fighting intuition, you know, from, from one person's point of view to the next. And there's, there's, no, there's no formula to, you know, make that easier. Like, everybody has their own opinion. You know, I like red, you like blue, they like green. It's like, you know, how do you, how do you navigate? Um, not as much as I would like. Uh, it definitely is a hard thing because, you know, again, it's subjective. It's, it's not quantitative. Um, and I, I wish there was a better way uh, to A-B test visual design, but it's, you know, you, you just sort of, You just, yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to intuition, and you just have to, like, implement it, and if, yeah, if, if it really drastically changes conversion, then, then you know you're doing something wrong, but what that is, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to tell, because it isn't quantitative. Cool, got time for one more, maybe? Any other questions? Oh God. I have to shoot my mom or my sister. And, and who would you live on an island with? <laughs> yeah. Um you know, I, I mean from my personal experience, like I was a visual designer. I worked at Yelp, I muddled through the UI, so I kind of have this bias towards hiring a visual designer, because it's like, they can sort of get it, you know? Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, yes, I, I would much rather have a UI specialist to, to pair up, but like, I mean, yeah. Anybody can muddle, muddle through it. It's not going to be awesome, but. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. Thank you to Michael. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>